Earl Campbell. 50, 45, 40, 35, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Earl Campbell. Eddie George. Give Eddie George. Cuts back up the middle. 35, has room. 40. He's out of here. 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. In zone. 68 yards. Eddie George. Touchdown. Hey. Chris Johnson. Sweep left. Johnson turns the corner, dives. Touchdown, Titans. Derek Henry. Mariota gives it to Henry. Henry bounces it outside. 5, 10, 15, stiff arm, 20, 25, 30, 40, stiff arm, 50, 40, 30. He's on his feet. Big chase, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Titans. All great running backs. All for the same NFL organization. This week's Titans at 25, presented by Bud Light, features Tennessee's Fabulous Four. Plus, Amy Wells sits down with Amani Hooker as he settles in as one of the team's leaders. You're watching Titans All Access, and it starts right now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derek Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? Levis, Levis to Hopkins. Yeah. Big gift. There's another second of Adi Hooker. There's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the Bet MGM Studio and Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. Glad you're with us. Amani Hooker, safety for the Tennessee Titans, signed a contract extension in September of 2022 and has become one of the top leaders on this football team. Our Amy Wells had a chance to sit down with Imani Hooker and talk about his developing leadership style, team chemistry, and a lot more in this week's Nissan Insider. Carr dropping under pressure, fires down the middle, intercepted. It's picked up the 15 to the 20 and to the 22 yard line to steal himself. Amani Hooker with his second takeaway of the first half. Amani Hooker, another season, year five. Tell me about the coaching staff that you've been working with a little bit. That I know there's some new faces, there's some new people that you guys have gotten to experience. What have you liked about that? Um, I want to start with the DB coach, Coach Harris. I mean, he's an exciting guy. Um, he loves the ball, ex-player, so he knows the game. He knows what it's like to, to be in certain situations, so he's very um, relatable in that aspect. Yeah! Yeah! Um, and Coach Lowe, um, also seeing her, how she works with the other guys, the D-linemen, and um, the way that she just has energy and fire, you know, it, it gets guys pumped up. You're the youngest of what, four brothers? Uh, no, two older sisters and older brother. Having those relationships, having a lot of siblings that you're maneuvering, how did that experience help you be a part of a team and develop some leadership skills? Um, since I'm the youngest, I was able to see, you know, my oldest siblings, my sisters, go through you know, the same type of team aspect. They had their struggles in different types of ways. So I, you know, listened to my dad on his advice to them. Then, you know, I was just like four or five years old growing up. And then my brother comes along. He's, you know, he's a basketball player. He was a star in high school and in college. So seeing how he was a leader of all the teams that he was on, you know, that just helped me kind of pick apart each aspect and what to learn from and what to apply to my life. Does that make you comfortable within a locker room setting, like having people around who have that camaraderie and that bond? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, because we want to have a family atmosphere here. You know, we want to have that connection. So when it comes to game day, I know I can look at Christian and, and he knows what's going on. So it's kind of like that, that brother, that sibling feel. Having that on the field in the, I guess, action of a game when things are moving so quickly, it has to be so important that you can almost anticipate not only the thoughts, but also the movements of the people around yeah. you. Yeah, it's very important. I mean, that's what we're doing now. We're trying to build that chemistry. So then when it comes you get down to the two minutes or end of the game and the crowd's loud, you might not be able to hear the call across the field, but everyone trusts each other and know that, you know, that you're gonna be in the right position. What are things that you guys can do to build that chemistry? Because that's got to be something that happens all season. Yeah, it's definitely all year long. I mean, it happens in practice. It happens in the locker room. Um, it also happens when you're just eating lunch, sitting down, having a conversation, um, getting to know guys. Because the more you know them personable level, then that way, you know, they can trust you a little more. Is that something that you have to 
communicate maybe to younger guys, to rookies, to things like that? Like you've got to invest in these people? Yeah, you gotta, you do gotta invest in these people. I mean, that's something that I try and preach. Like you can't just, you know, sit back and be, be an individual. You gotta be able to, to put yourself out there and be involved in that way. Other guys can recognize that and they, they trust that you wanna be here and you want and that you love football. Later on in this edition of Titans All Access, Coach Dave McGinnis joins me to go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft, to look at the quarterback the Titans will face this weekend in Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence. But up next, a look at a special relationship continuing to build over 25 years. The men and women of Fort Campbell coming to Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park for another edition of the Military Bowl. We'll show it to you next on Titans All Access. This is Stadium in 60. A quick update on the Titans' new stadium presented by Nissan. The new stadium will be built in a giant parking lot to the east of Nissan Stadium. So in between the current stadium and the highway, Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill gets more specific. If you, if you were to pull up a Google map right now and look at, at the stadium site from above, you'll see that there's a stadium-shaped parking lot between the current stadium and the and the highway, which we have learned was, was not an accident. Uh, there, was, there was always a thought that maybe there would be a second stadium built and they wanted to preserve a sp space for it. But now in this 2.0 version of the stadium, you get to take those things that you loved about that central location, about you know just being a great place to watch football, uh, and, and you get to add to it these other elements that really no other stadium in the NFL has, where there's going to be this neighborhood that develops around it. And there's green spaces and open spaces that are just gonna change the game day environment, but also make it really fun to be in around the stadium you know, in the middle of March, uh, because it's just gonna be this amazing part of town. And, and we're so proud and, and honored and blessed to be a part of it. For the latest news, visit titansnewstadium.com. It's time for the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. The decision to sign rookie Eric Guerrero to the active roster has proven to be an excellent one. Guerrero has already made 10 tackles as the Titans nickel back in the last three games. Plus, he has 62 yards on 10 punt returns. Promoting Eric Guerrero from the practice squad to the active roster is the decision of the week presented by Hughes and Coleman. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. You hear a lot about salute to service, and it's vitally important all over the National Football League. In Tennessee, maybe even more so because of our relationship with the service men and women from the 101st Airborne at Fort Campbell. We invited them to come to our complex, Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, for a little fellowship and some flag football. The Military Bowl is what it's called, and it is this week's Listen Up with Duncan. We're here today with the Tito's Military Bowl to kick off uh, Salute to Service Month at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Uh, real excited to have 125 uh, active duty soldiers from the 101st Airborne from Fort Campbell. We've been doing this about five years. It's a great event. Put on for the battalion. You know, we did, we did everything we could in our spirits. Highly competitive, as you can imagine. It's truly a blessing uh, to be here and to put on for the Army is, is just amazing. It was a great experience. Man, I've been playing football for, for 20 years, and I can remember. So coming here and showing my skills and, you know, snagging on people, you know, having everybody laugh, having a good time, it's, it's a great time. It's truly a blessing. Honestly, it was a team effort. Uh, I got the opportunity to play quarterback for 531st. And we came out here to, you know, with one mission, and that was to win, win the championship. And we, as a team, collectively as a team, came out and did that. So this is one of our favorite things that we do all year. It's a great kickoff to salute the service month. Our defense played extremely well in the championship. Did I hear defense? Defense hit it. Did I hear defense? Defense hit it. Hey, Y'all did that thing. Best quarterback. <laughs> the champions, man. In the modern era of the National Football League, a lot of teams can claim that they've had two great running backs, maybe even three great running backs, but none can match the Tennessee Titans organization having four all-time great running backs in the modern era. Titans at 25, make sure you know exactly who they are and why it makes the Titans stand out when Titans All Access continues after this.
you look at our running back. Earl Campbell set the tone. Then you had Eddie George. Then you had Chris Johnson. Then you got Derrick Henry. Those are our, our pillars. As usual, Keith Bullock is right. But let's take it a step further. Can you name another NFL franchise that has four running backs as accomplished as these four? A lot of NFL teams can claim two or maybe three, but four? Can any team match the Tyler Rose? 2-7, CJ2K, and of course, the King. The franchise had good backs before Earl Campbell, but Campbell's first four years in the league were like nothing since Jim Brown. From 1978 through 1981, Campbell averaged over 100 yards rushing per game, 4.6 yards per carry, and scored 55 touchdowns. Beast. I think it's Earl, I think it's sheer raw power. And he played like a linebacker. He played the running back position a line, like a linebacker. You could feel his tape. You can watch it, but feel it internally. You, you had a, a physical reaction when you watched Earl Campbell, whether it was, ooh, it was cringeworthy. It was the pain that you could feel that he was inflicting on people. So. Um, that's, that's what I think of when I think of Earl. When you think of Eddie George, you think of incredibly consistent. In eight years with the franchise, he never missed a game. Seven 1,000-yard seasons, 74 touchdowns. In Houston or Memphis or Nashville, Eddie George set the standard of excellence. Oh man, he's, he's a like, hard nose. He wanted, he wanted a pressure. He want to come in there and he going to run hard. He's been doing the same thing since he was at Ohio State, coming to the league, him and Ray Lewis having those great battles. And I just used to love watching him play and play with him on Dreamcast. I used to run, run people over on the Dreamcast game and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, he's definitely a great player. Chris Johnson was definitely a great player. CJ had over a thousand yards rushing in each of his six seasons with the Titans. Johnson had six runs of 80 yards or more, and of course, he rushed for over 2,000 yards in 2009, CJ2K. I felt like he touched the ball, he was going to score every time. Man, that's unbelievable at the NFL level. So, yeah, he was, he was special like that. I'll never forget how quickly you knew that some, one of his handoffs was going to result in a touchdown. Uh, you know, some backs, you know, get through the first wave, then you've got to do a lot of work to still get to the end zone. Chris Johnson, if he had any crease at all, you knew he was gone. Derrick Henry has a 2,000 yard season of his own. That came in 2020. He's got the 1,000 yard seasons. He's got the long touchdown runs. He has embarrassed tacklers. The King has some Earl Campbell in him with the physicality. He looks a lot like Eddie George, only bigger. And while not as fast, he has CJ2K's breakaway ability. And, you know, Earl Campbell, you know, he's like a superhero, you know, watching him and hearing all the great stories about him growing up and then going to Eddie, somebody I looked up to, got to watch play and uh, admire very dearly. And then Chris Johnson, who just brought the game to another level whenever he touched foot to this organization and you know, the electric season that he had and all the, the great highlight moments, you know, it's um, you know, something that you know, really you can't, co can't compare it to. But there's a lot of great tradition of backs that, you know, whenever I step on the field, that's the standard and something that, you know, hopefully I can live up to one day and be as great as those guys. These four backs have had the ability to carry the franchise. In the biggest moments, you could turn and hand each the football, understanding that they would use their unique skill set to help win the game. Earl Campbell, Eddie George, Chris Johnson, Derrick Henry. No other NFL franchise can claim four backs in the last 50 years who were as impactful. They are this organization's fabulous four. Derrick Henry has had a lot of great games back in his hometown of Jacksonville. That's where the Titans go next. 
And up next on Titans All Access, we go beneath the surface powered by Microsoft with Coach Dave McGinnis to take a look at the Jaguars' top weapon that the Titans must slow. That's next on Titans All Access. Play fake, Mayfield under pressure, hit. Sacked! Tier Tart gets him back outside the 40-yard line. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. Look who's here. Coach Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio, welcome. Great to be here. Ready to go to Jacksonville? Yes, I'm ready to go to Jacksonville. I'm ready to go over there to the Telestrator first. All right, well, let's talk before we go to the Telestrator okay. about the guy you're going to Telestrate. Is that a word? Anyway, Trevor Lawrence, we know him. This will be the fifth time we've seen him. What do the Titans expect to get when they play against Trevor Lawrence? Well, first of all, number one pick in the draft, and for a reason. This guy is a franchise quarterback. The guy can do it all. He can reach all aspects of the field. He's a smart guy. He can really move. He can run. So he's a, he's a problem. He's a problem in the cylinder. He's a problem on the move. He's got some really good explosive players to throw it to. And what they've done now, they will use a lot of different formations to get those receivers out for him. But if you don't, if you're not really, really conscious about your rush lanes, Mike, he can really hurt you with his legs. All right, let's see how we can move to the Telestrator, as promised. Coach Dave McGinnis is going to show us some Trevor Lawrence here. Right here, right? That would be him. All right, the thing, the thing we want to look at to start right here is this is an empty set. You heard me talk about, you heard me talk about the, the, the weapons that he has. Travis Etienne, okay, this guy right here does a lot more than just be a running back. He's very dangerous in the screen game, but he can also move out and run individual routes. He has moved out now to numbers plus splits. Anytime I say numbers plus, here are the numbers. If you move that way, it's numbers plus, okay? If you move this way, it's numbers minus, all right? So there's numbers plus splits. He's gonna move out. He's gonna, they're gonna discern who the, the, the defense has put on him. And then if they like the advantage that they have with the matchup, they're going to take advantage of it. Let's look at it, Mike. All right, they move out here. All right, we see we see the way the, the way that Pittsburgh has been deployed. This is a man-to-man -man defense now. They're, they're, they're deployed man-to-man. -man. He has got him. All right, as he's looking out here, he's got three receivers. This is a three, this is a three-two split. You got three receivers up here, two down here. But here's the matchup he's looking for when he came out of the huddle. Let's let it run. He points for protection. As they look at it, they get a four-man rush. Watch the move here. It's over with. It's over with. That's Etienne to the house as a wide receiver on the back end. Let's just watch it from the end zone. You can see. Watch him point. He points. As they start to move, you're going to get a four-man rush right here. The safety, stop it, Mike. The safety right here has moved to the middle of the field. And once he knows the safety has moved to the middle of the field, he is throwing to this side immediately because the safety has moved over here to top these receivers. So it's one-on-one -on -one to the top side. Let's take a look. Touchdown, Etienne. I mean, that was not a good matchup for the Steelers. It was a great matchup for the Jaguars. And Etienne can really catch. Oh, I mean, he's a, he's a, a fabulous, fabulous player. Now what we're going to look at, this is a, a what we call a trips speed formation. It's trip speed because you've got three receivers up here to the top. Right here, we've got three receivers up here to the top. You've got a close. This is closed back here. We call this closed because the tight end is in tight. So you've got a trip speed formation up here to the right. Close formation. Watch what he does now when he gets it's a little bit of extra room with his legs. Take a look at it, Mike. Let's let all everybody take a look and see what he does. Here he comes. He sees it. Pressure gone. Now, he's not just going to run and slide. Look at him eat stripes up. Look at this hole. Look at the size of this hole that he saw here because the rush was not coordinated everywhere you wanted to be. Everybody's in man-to-man -man defense off of here. Watch how many stripes he eats up when Mike plays this. Now again, this isn't just a big lumbering quarterback. So this is the issue that he's going to uh, uh, show to our defense. The guy can read out defenses. He's got an arm that can reach anywhere on the field, but he can run and he can run. They're going to call. They're going to call bootlegs. They're going to call things to put him in space. And in space, this is the problem that you have with Trevor Lawrence, Mike. Trevor Lawrence, 44 carries on the year for 223 yards, hitting 67 percent of his passes for over 2,100 yards. Dual threat quarterback in a very different way. Coach Dave McGinnis, thank you. Thank you, Mike Keith. You're wonderful doing this. Well, I try hard. No, you do I it. really give a big effort. <laughs> I'm going to give a big effort on my seat geek keys to beating Jacksonville. That's coming up next when Titans All Access continues. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Time now for my Seat Geek keys to a Titans victory in Jacksonville. Key number one, do not let Josh Allen have a day. I'm not talking about the Buffalo quarterback. I'm talking about the pass rusher for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's gotten better every year he's been in the NFL. Already nine sacks this season for Josh Allen. The Titans must find him and block him and not let him dominate the day. Key number two, slow Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk on third downs. Those are the two leading receivers for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They also have 12 catches apiece on third downs. That's where Trevor Lawrence likes to go with the ball, most of all, to those two players. The Titans must contain Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram on third downs. And finally, don't let Trevor Lawrence run. Trevor Lawrence is 6'6", 220 pounds, but he can certainly move. He too is outstanding on third down. The Titans must keep him in the pocket and not let him escape. Because if he does, he often goes for more than just five or 10 yards. He can take it 25 to 30 yards. Don't let Trevor Lawrence run on Sunday. Titans and the Jaguars this Sunday from Everbank Stadium in Jacksonville. We're on the air with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central Time. Kickoff set for 12.02 Central on your Titans radio station. And in Nashville, that's our flagship, 104.5 The Zone. For our outstanding staff, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for watching, and we'll see you next time.